Hi everybody, today I wanna to talk to you guys about what to do when the light sucks. I meant the light outside. <sighs> Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Larry, I'm a photographer. If it's your first time joining me on the channel. This is my channel about wildlife photography. Today, I wanna to talk to you guys about six different things that you can do when the light outside sucks. And by that, what I mean is it's too harsh or it's too dark, or maybe it's not even the lighting, maybe it's the weather conditions that are keeping you inside. Things that you can do to improve your wildlife photography without actually going out and taking wildlife photos. First thing that I wanna mention is research. Knowledge is your ally. You literally can never learn enough. If you wanna become a better wildlife photographer, you need to do your research. You need to learn what species are in your area. You need to learn what habitat they enjoy. You need to learn where to find that habitat near you. There's a variety of things that you can do your research on. Spend your time learning. You don't have to be out in the field just photographing all the time. When you're doing your research, consider using, you know, the old school way like books, but there's also apps and websites like eBird and Merlin that are fantastic resources for birds at least. Uh, there's also iNaturalist and a few other apps that are available for a whole variety of species. Do your research, you will be glad you did. The second thing that you can do to improve your wildlife photography experience is get out and scout locations physically. Now there's two kind of types of scouting that I'm talking about, general scouting. So just getting out, driving around, finding different habitats, different areas, using Google Maps as a great resource, or like I mentioned eBird before, it's got a hotspots map. It's fantastic for finding new spots to find new species to photograph. The other thing that you can do is more specific scouting. Go to your local green spaces, the places that you do visit a lot, and spend time looking for different compositions, looking for different backgrounds, different perches, different placements, look for tracks, look for signs of different animals. Scouting is super important if you wanna get great wildlife photos. Now, the third thing that you can do when the light sucks is get more comfortable with your gear. Pick up your camera, take pictures of your cat, take pictures of your dog, take pictures of a plant, doesn't matter. The more comfortable you are with your gear, the more consistent results you're going to get. So get used to shooting in different types of light. Get used to shooting indoors, outdoors, play with light. It doesn't necessarily mean you need to buy artificial lights. Shoot near a window, shoot away from a window, shoot into a window, shoot through a window. Practice, learn what your camera is capable of doing and I promise you, it's going to benefit you in the future, regardless of what style of photography you're doing, wildlife or otherwise. Now, the fourth thing that could occupy a whole lot of your time when the light sucks outside is editing. I can tell you that editing is a huge part of my process as a wildlife photographer, and I know for a fact it is for a lot of others too. I spend equally as much time behind my computer or more than I do behind my camera. Editing is a massive part of your photography, whether you want to do major photo manipulation in something like Photoshop, or you're just doing basic color adjustments and trying to keep things looking natural, but every camera is different. And so if you want to kind of develop your own consistent style, you need to edit your photos. Tip number five kind of goes along with the tip number three, which I mentioned was get more comfortable with your gear. Tip number five is just go shoot. Anyways, the light might not be perfect, but you never know what you're gonna find if you're out in the field trying to take photos. Now, there are some things you can do to try to give yourself an advantage. If it's too dark to shoot out, try to find somewhere with some artificial light, maybe telephone poles, different light standards. You can shoot in the city. There's a lot of different birds that nest in the city and you can use lights like that. If it's too bright out, try to find shade. Get into a forest, get into a cave, try to find a cliffside. There's a lot of ways to neutralize the harsh light, even if it seems like it's basically impossible to get a great photo at that time of day. So the last thing that you can do to improve your wildlife photography, this is number six, is 
just relax, take a break, go crack a cold beverage, hot beverage, whatever you want, do some yard work, get out and enjoy the sunshine. Just because it's a beautiful day doesn't mean you need to be worrying about why you can't take the best wildlife photos. Sunset's a few hours away, sun's gonna come up tomorrow morning, there's gonna be cloudy days ahead too. Just take a break. It's important, no matter what you're doing, to not spend all of your time concentrating on it because the fact is, taking a break is actually going to lead to improvement. Well guys, that's it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Once again, my name's Larry, I'm a photographer, and if you guys enjoy this content, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you're notified every time I post a new video, hit the like button, and if you have any tips about what you do when the light sucks, leave a comment down below. Let's share that wealth with everyone. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you on Wednesday for Wildlife Wednesdays. Peace.